the lost causes mentality that the South was right. And it was written by historians for a long time. They, the war was not about slavery, it was about states' rights. And the Confederacy was uh, put upon by the industrial North. And they really pushed for people like Robert E. Lee to be glorified. And so Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, the whole Monument Avenue in Richmond, which is still the most visited uh, tourist destination in Richmond today. And most of these statues, you look at almost all of them. They're put up in like the early 20th century, end of the 20s, right when Jim Crow is starting its uh, rise in the South, when Jim Crow starts to rise in the South and African-Americans are put under a different kind of heel, not the slavery heel, but definitely the racist discrimination heel. And almost invariably all those statues are there. And how did it spread to the North is a good question. Yeah, the, the South for the, the Lost Cause mythos is also going to really manifest itself. Um, in, starting in the 1870s, there's going to be a real, uh, a massive financial depression in the 1870s. Um, the Civil War in the North means that the idea of the agricultural sort of heartland and this sort of farms has really been transformed into industrialization. And there's a really devastating financial depression and not just a recession, but a full on uh, depression. There is labor unrest, the first national labor strikes. Um, industrialization really picks up speed. The war enhances it. And what many Northerners look out is they, they look from instead of their sort of pre-war small farm, small town, um, very similar to what they'd experienced uh, pretty much since the start of the 19th century, had pretty radically changed. And there was a lot of discontent going into the 1880s. There's a, it's, a, it's an era of what's called the Long Depression, where the highs get really high and the lows get really low. And so you have wonderful creations, and it really destabilizes much of the North. And the South really sort of decides in many cases, uh, continues in that sort of agricultural uh, mode. And what it ends up in is that there is a conscious effort by, at that time, uh, Confederate veteran sympathizers to, and their Northern sympathizers too, because that's the thing we want to keep in mind is that not everybody in the North was on board with the whole, with the, the Union cause, that has presented itself sort of uh, mawkishly as this land that it still has tradition, a hierarchy, a structure, um, the North has waves of immigrants that also challenges the traditional sort of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant hierarchy that had pretty much existed for most of the 19th century. So you begin to have this sort of nostalgia kick in for the, nor for the North that looks at the South as moonlight and magnolias to that degree. In the South as well, there, uh, Jim Crow begins to really start to bite in the 1880s. And by from 1890 around 1920 is, is usually called the, the nadir, about as low as race relations ever get with uh, extreme vigilante violence and brutality uh, that you know abates only slightly. We have to be careful of that. Um, and there's a real sense in the North that the that that what did you get out of the Civil War? You got an industrialized capitalist. Uh, you know, in, in you know, very go 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 society. Everything picks up speed. And it, it really is uh, disconcerting and it really tells you, doesn't tell you where your place is or how it works. And the South starts to look very good in, in comparison. And I would also point out too, there's another component that lets it spread. The Union Army's veterans group is called the Grand Army of the Republic. And it's, it's similar in a way to prohibition, national prohibition of alcohol. The Union Army veterans, for whatever reason they fought, be it for abolitionist causes, for adventure, whatever, they view their work as done. They won the military struggle, the South surrendered, and you go home. Your victory is self-evident. The South does not view it, as Scott mentioned, does not view it as, as a, a settled matter uh, and really does portray that sort of idea. There's also an effort among veterans and also among political leaders uh, particularly in the 1876 election, another uh, sort of creepy parallel to today, um, really wants to push reconciliation, that we are one nation again, and we're going to do all that. And that's going to be another powerful image that this, that the Confederate veterans do not accept that as a settled matter. The North is very eager to sort of reunite. By 1913, uh, the 50th anniversary uh, of Gettysburg um, we see that uh, Ken Burns had it in his Civil War video, that sort of 
we are all one nation. We're all reconciled. And there are no African-American veterans. There is no discussion of that. And it, it really does sort of have a multi-pronged effect in the North, both in cultural sense that this is a place that still moves by the old rhythms, um, which leaves out quite a bit. Um, it's an idea of, of reconciliation across the North that we are one nation. Um, and then also, it's also important to remember, and the last point is that even up until the 1900, 90% of all African-Americans lived south of the Ohio River. So in many parts of the North, you had very little contact with African-Americans. And, you know, it, it really wasn't part of your everyday life. And that allows uh, stereotypes, expectations to, to really sort of linger without a sort of a direct connection to that regard. And that really helps to spread that sort of idea of moonlight and magnolias in the North. And that's also pop culture, which I'll address in a moment. This it still exists in the South. I don't know if you can see that, but it says erected to the memory of the heroes. This is in Louisiana, Stephen Decoder, Perry, yada, 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 who fell in the Colfax riot fighting for white supremacy. And this is a monument in support of those people. And so there's, so that's kind of, a, that's the mentality that lost cause. But then I grew up, this is my fraternities, was actual rush pamphlet. That's the year I pledged. And so you can obviously see there's some lost cause mentality in, in, in this. 